guys, it's the Devil's Town here, and in today's video we have the first installment of viewer VOD reviews. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a fellow trio mate of mine, Taco, and what he did well and what he did wrong in the most recent DreamHack NA East tournament. Now, I plan on doing these viewer VOD reviews as often as possible, however, it does depend on if I get any VODs to review. If you are interested in having your gameplay reviewed, please contact me at either Twitter or Instagram. Those social links are down below in the description. But before I get into this viewer VOD review, guys, if you do enjoy my content or find what I'm telling you helpful, please drop a like on this video, hit that subscribe button, and turn on post notifications. But without further ado, let's get right into it. So I'm going to be going over in depth what Taco did well and what Taco did poorly. But first, I'm going to be going over what he did poorly. And the most glaring, obviously, thing wrong was his choice of drop spot. His drop spot did not allow him enough loot density or material density to provide him an advantage. And it ended up hurting him in later on in some engagements. And actually, when he switched his drop spot on his own to a different location, he ended up having the best game in terms of kills out of the entire tournament. All right, game number two. So we got an off-spawn fight, looks like. Okay, landing kind of weather station-ish. Okay. Not too familiar with this drop spot, but I'm probably gonna say that it's, it's is this where you landed last game as well? Yeah. yeah. Okay. This is the one thing that I think is going to worry me about this drop spot is your amount of of loot. Because right now I only see one chance to really one one uh, one thing to really play with. One chest and some maybe floor spawns. This drop spot doesn't give you a ton of materials either. It's looking like. Fortunate to get minis right there out of that. But notice how you're coming out of here, it's like, okay, you got very fortunate with shield, but we're still rocking a green pistol. Yeah. And we're less than 100 100 on everything. Now, hopefully, you get this uncontested. So you want to make sure your make sure your drop spots give you an advantage in either health or shield or materials or loot density. Those are some things. So it looks like you got a good start. Very fortunate. So this place looks like it's actually probably a better first start to land, and then maybe you can road up here for that one possible chest. I don't know if there's more loot spawns, but it looks like there's a good amount of floor spawns, and there's possible two chests here. So in terms of loot density, this would also Give you a little bit better of an advantage, and it's less open, which off spawn can definitely benefit you. You got a ton. It looks like a good amount of wood, so I would recommend trying to land at this house first, okay. and then maybe going. The up. next thing that Taco struggled with at times was greediness. Sometimes he would be overzealous to get a kill or overzealous to get a certain position, and it ended up costing him some very valuable points and there were times that he did die with a significant amount of materials in end game or in mid game or utility in mid game such as movement bouncers and crashers so greediness was something that taco definitely needed to be made aware of and something that he did need to work on in the future the opponents there so it's kind of same thing like you you've had one engagement here already you have another okay let's see Good angle. Good. Good anything with blueprints. Good cone slot. Kind of froze for me. Good. I like the pressure. Opponent may be weak. Okay. Yeah, All right. So just let's let's just go back to it. Yeah. So you have this rotation. Because it was free to, there was no, there, you weren't getting pressured. I'm, I'm, so get some tags on you. That's okay. Not running out with the blueprints right there. Yep. Yeah. This, oh God. Okay. So 
let's just go back and let's watch just this section okay so so how do we prevent this one not boxing up where we boxed up to begin with because now we're running right through the teeth of everything if we're up on high ground we're rotating back behind where all these kids now you're in a sandwich yeah and so another like another thing again with just that is like rotating with the builds out and that's like another thing it's like okay you got tagged it's like at the point it's like okay i don't i don't even mind you right here so if you go back and look at your positioning if you if you go up a little bit and you get to so i'm telling you when you get that first tick so just play it just due to your loadout so you get that first tick i don't really care if you box up here and brick and refarm that and here's why look at your amount of mobility you don't have to be as super greedy and it's like i kind of always like a rule of thumb is like if i get tagged i kind of i always just if i get tagged like a situation like that and i'm kind of in and i'm getting shot at from both sides and i know that there's multiple people like i'm not going to be able to really get any further without getting focused but you have so much mobility it doesn't even matter and the best part about being you in that position is like since that's center it's more than likely to go down towards slurpee more than likely if it doesn't then it's going to be on you right well you're yeah. going down a gigantic hill when you have all this mobility so you're going to get to use just only like one if you really have to rotate or you can wait for people to funnel so when you got that first tag just you could have just boxed up in the brick is what i would have recommended to do i think just a little bit uh, one again better positioning earlier would have prevented that from happening if you would continued to gone up towards more the middle and towards um because your box up was pretty much not guaranteeing it would almost guarantee that you weren't going to get zone and then uh, another and then another facet i would say is again is like don't be just super duper greedy especially when you have that amount of mobility because that's that is tragic dying with that again that amount of rng in terms of mobility because it's going to allow you to extend your games okay what's a little farther kind of take a you could take a pepper and kind of recycle that as long as That's you just yeah and just block off your back right here make sure it was what i would definitely do just recommend just block off your back okay this is a little bit scuffed <laughs> Yeah, I get too greedy again with my rotate, and that's what I think that's what. I'm doing. Okay, we'll see. We'll see. Good. You can do this with peppers. Good. All right, so. Yep. Just right back. Oh no need, no need, no need. So go back. Yeah, I know exactly. No need, right? 11 yeah. bouncers, 6 chilies, and 2 crashes, and 600 mats. Yeah. It's, it's just greediness. It's just greedy. It's greedy. It's it's going for the impact that you, you really didn't need to go for. Yeah, I know. Because, man, you, so, what I like, I love that you're on dead side, right? Notice, look how free this is. I say you continue going pretty much ahead, and you realize that you had to go up, and that's when you use those crash pads to get the, those elevation or those bouncers. Oh, there was just no need. Yeah, I know. Yeah, just greediness. It's like, look how much you have left to still use. Yeah. You have 11 bouncers too, and that's and like that's the thing. Is just sometimes it's, it's greedy. You gotta make sure. And I'm telling you, like, you'll get your frags late game. Like, don't try not to always force your frags. Like, I know it's like tempting at times. Yeah. But like, use make sure you're using all your stuff that you can use. The third thing that Taco struggled with, it was a minor thing, but definitely stuck out to me. It was lack of use of upgrade stations early on in the tournament. There would be times that he would be running around with a gray pump or a green pump with max mats and run right by an upgrade station and not improve his RNG. Now, he did end up correcting this later after getting some kills and going up to a spaz, but there was times that he would run right by upgrade stations with white weapons and not upgrade them, even though that it's basically cost nothing to do so. So this was a minor detail, but it was very important for me to point out and fix and he ended up actually doing it on his own later on as the tournament progressed
Alright, there's no reason not to upgrade. There's an upgrade station right in front of you, so that was a mistake for sure. No reason, no reason. You're such a short rotate too, you could have probably stayed there and farmed for extra metal. Getting up metal. Literally, just because you rotate so short, you could have literally taken this blue charge that you grabbed right here and side and get it to a spaz for only 170. You could have easily gotten your wooden brick back up and with the metal with being in the dance hall. Another aspect that Taco struggled with was rifts. He would take rifts, but he would not maximize their potential. When you have a rift, I explained to Taco during that some of these clips that you need to prioritize to get a power position. This is somewhere on high ground in the middle of zone where you can either conserve materials or you can use it as a power play to get a impact frag to improve your loot and mobility items, hopefully, when you get that frag. But Taco did not do this in the tournament, and in the future, I think he will for sure now. So you could kind of wait till he takes it and then hijack it. Good decision. Okay. Smart by both of you. So you're, you should be thinking, okay, this is third zone, so I want to land on elevation if I can. So that hill should be okay. I want to sit up there, build a nice little wood base. So you notice exactly where he goes. Yeah. And notice so now you're 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 on more of a probably a more fortunate side, but look at all that elevation you're gonna have to cover. Now you have to go up. You have to go up, up. So I like the decision to go left. But now 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 you have someone that could possibly hold you up. And you're now you're going towards a side of zone that's probably going to be like more top side. It looks like. I don't know if you're you're looking back, but look at it. It'll look congested, because again, this is where everyone's funneling into. Yeah. You saw those crash pads are real good. Unfortunately, the game is not super stacked. Notice if you already landed in that elevation, it was only for one crash pad, right? That's your your only gain. And unfortunately, because the game isn't too stacked, it's not really going to hurt you. You see that opponent right there? Good, let's see. But notice how we're hugging in second when we could literally be in such a better spot already. Now we're, now we're going to have to run through up. We are guaranteed to have to move up elevation one and two. We're guaranteed to prop, you know. Where, instead of where we could have landed off that rift. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know how obviously it's going to affect you, but I'm just saying that it's like, that's probably a little bit. So we get a nice fortunate zone. And I, I bet you if you land on the ridge, you'll already be in and not have to worry about rotation. Tahoe's tournament was not all bad. There was various good things that he did as well. The most important thing that I think that he did extremely well was his understanding of rotations and game sense. He understood that how to play for placement and where he needed to go to make sure that he avoided fights and maximize his opportunities to preserve his materials and utility while he was not aiming to W key. A good position, elevation early. <laughs> And same type deal you're getting up good you got elevation early you can see what's in front of you you're playing on the dead side just which is good another aspect that taco excelled at was w king and frags when he wanted to taco was very adept at ending fights fast and clutching up in certain situations where he may have not been at health advantage with raw good mechanics and raw aim taco's w king skills were on display quite a bit and I actually advised him that he needs to work on actually wanting to W key a little bit more because of his skill is actually very, very impressive when he does do it. Okay. Because he doesn't hit, there's no way he hits you that hard with a cone in his box. He's not ready and wedding. You need to get out of there. Good. Good recognition. He's got everything. Good. Good pickaxe bait. Oh my God. That was very nice. Let's watch that again. That's very, very nice. Right here. Good pickaxe bait. Takes a wall. Beautiful. And then excellent 
Excellent. Good, 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 good. Good. Oh my goodness gracious. You want to rewind? Or? Yes. <laughs> okay. Alright. Another thing that Taco did extremely well was use the movement items that are in the game. Now that there's a versatile amount of movement items such as bouncers, crashers, and shockwaves, Taco did an exemplary job of combining these all in one match en route to a victory royale. What? Good cracks. Good. And so now, beautiful. Beautiful, we're in here. Good. Now immediately should be looking that direction for kids coming in. But not a super stack game, so you're at 10. So we're at 2-2-3, two, two, and we still have an absolute ridiculous amount of mobility. Yeah. So uh, all we should be thinking is we're using all of our mobility first. We shouldn't even be worrying about mats. We should just be using whatever mobility we can. That two two three. Realize that we at some point we are going to get an impact, but we're going to at least maximize our, our mobility. Don't like that pink. Good decision to not take it. But getting awareness, opening up with so many people above you right here. If you do do that, oh my goodness, you fried him. Good, a good decision. Just be quick about it. Just be aware. So you're going pretty much back right where you came. So you could set up the bouncer uh, shock. And just wait till zone touches you. That way you should just fly beautifully right in. That works as well. Now we're using mats again when we don't have to. This is a little bit careless. Nice. Beautiful. It worked in your favor. Okay, you're getting a little bit behind the zone here, and now you're going on de-elevation, which you don't want. No need to use mats here with how much mobility you have. You have an insane amount of mobility. Should be a shock. Beautiful. Okay. Get up if you can. Beautiful, you got up. Good recognition. That guy's back. You continue to pressure him because you know he's... He got the kill, unfortunately. Beautiful. You're going to play ahead. Nice. Getting it. Easy recognition. Now, your your goal here is just to, to get ahead and hold high ground. You have the mats. What is that kid doing? Oh, no. It confused me a little bit. That's why I was... Okay, don't need to build fight. So much mobility. Okay. You can get up ahead and dominate this kid. You do have the mats to do this. Which is fortunate. It is a 1v1. Alright, Oliver Wood's gone. Good awareness. Nice. Great job. So, I like that. But he, So, here's what I would have preferred. You to go down and just shoot about. I mean, y'all guys are so damn high. Yeah. Like, you have the mobility, sure. I like the good usage of the bouncers right there just to kind of get up in height. You would, you could afford to crank for height and fight for it. Uh, but another thing you could have also done is another... So what you did worked well. Another thing you could have done is just use your bouncers to get ahead and then just pressure that guy. He's going to have to burn so many mats. And those 1v1s and movings, when you're ahead, it's just, again, it's just kind of like the thing staying ahead. That's like you're fighting him like kind of on the edge of storm. Like it's going to be so much harder for him to move forward when you're just pressuring his walls. Especially with how like high that you eventually had gotten that like he could have taken a significant amount of fall damage. And the fact that you already knew that you were at, at health advantage because you fried him. So yeah. 
So again, just make it just so so difficult. You don't want to get into sometimes those close quarter range. Like imagine he has a spaz and one pump you. Like instead, yeah. where you could just be at a way, be at a distance, be ahead. Like you know that you more than likely have mad advantage because you had significant amount of mobility. And I'm glad you won because there is no way that I would have been mad at you if you didn't with that amount of mobility. Holy hell, you had so much mobility, it was nuts. <laughs> and you got some more with some of your kills. You had like 12 bouncers, so really good stuff. Let's see the next one. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this first installment of viewer VOD reviews. If you learned something, if you enjoyed the content, or if you're taco, please drop a like on this video, hit that subscribe button, and turn on post notifications. And I hope I'll be seeing you in the next one. Peace.